to have you guys on with us. Um, I gotta say, I'm, I'm looking for my, my my Bitcoin chat. You know what I gotta do? I, got, I think we gotta make like a, a big community. What's up, Action? We gotta make like a, one of those big communities on Twitter. I have not done that yet because I think just posting the link in there is probably gonna do wonders. Lucas, I need some feedback on that. What do you think? I have the biggest Web three. Um twitter community on you know one of those communities on twitter like it's i think it's like six thousand members or something like that now or seven thousand if you want to post in there you can it's called web3 twitter what the hell now you come up with what this? a flex what a flex lucas oh wow. hey guys, i launched this i launched this year i launched it years ago like when we were when you know nfts were and web3 were actually taken off dude like you guys really missed the you guys really missed the window Send me the invite, bro, to the freaking community at Lucas, least. don't kick us when we're down, man. <laughs> Send us the invite at least, then give us a little boot. 6,000. I could be packing every single room in here. 6,000. Now we decided to come out with it, but neither here nor there. Send me that invite. Yeah, I'm wrong. I'm, wrong. I'm sorry. It's six. It's 6,900. Oh. <gasps> so modest. I'm so modest. Sorry. Send it. Hey, man. Oh, numbers don't lie. Numbers don't lie. Check the scoreboard. <laughs> I bring action for this. I bring action for the sound effects. But yo, let's get this thing underway. <laughs> Hi, Orange. Welcome. Is that what we should call you? Yes. Thanks again for having us. Yeah. Quite simply, just Orange. Let's go. I love it. Quite simply, just Orange. Um, so, Orange, you should know that um, I have been pretty much brainwashing every community member um, that I come in contact with to get involved in the Bitcoin ecosystem, the Stacks ecosystem, and everything that. Uh, is attached to it so oh. <laughs> i'm a little biased i'm a big 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 fan of what you guys are doing but maybe let's kind of start from the beginning why don't you tell us a little bit about you orange crypto who you guys are what you do and then we'll kind of jump off from there sound good sounds great yeah and thank you so much for evangelizing and pushing forward this space right obviously bitcoin is the gold standard when it comes to blockchains and you know we're certainly very excited because we think that especially over the next couple of years um, more consumers and more interest is going to come into this space. So appreciate your efforts in doing this as well. My name is Damon Nam. I'm one of the founders and the CEO of Orange. We actually have a number of our team members on the line as well. I'll give them the chance to just briefly introduce themselves uh, here. But uh, as far as my background's concerned, came from corporate, worked at Microsoft for 17 years on the business side of the house, and then left in 2017 to go full-time into blockchain recruited a, a really good friend of mine that also worked at Microsoft for 10 years uh, but he was technical he was our CTO and for the past seven we've just been building a lot of different solutions in the space primarily on infrastructure um, and we've even helped companies launch and have done consulting for companies such as Republic and even Binance so extremely uh, happy to be here because over the past year, we've been very focused on uh, the narrative of building on Bitcoin and, and uh, you know, happy to dive into that uh, after the rest of the team does introductions. Yeah. So where is the rest of the team? I don't see I don't see anybody. Um, what's it? Are they on with you right there on the same account? Uh, no, different. So um, if we can. Evan and Dimitri. Yep. Got it. Wait, so hold on. Kevin, I invited Kevin. Who else? Dimitri, Dimitri G O L. Uh, Dimitri Golovchenko. Dimitri, if you could just hit the yeah, if you could just hit the request. There we go. If you could just hit the request button. There we go. I can jump in while uh, Dimitri is getting all set up, but definitely appreciate the invite. My name is Kevin. I am the COO of Orange. Uh, just a bit of background of myself. I'm based in Texas here in the states. And I started my career off in consulting, doing a lot of data and marketing related work. Um, really loved the data aspect of things. Went to go get my master's in data analytics at Carnegie Mellon. And at the same time was leading a lot of user acquisition at Expedia uh, for, for a lot of our paid channels there. So have good background with growth, marketing, data, um, things of that nature. And was literally spending hundreds of millions at Expedia while I was growing some of our fastest growing partners there. Um, but left all of that to join Damon in the blockchain space in 2017 and uh, you know, won't go over what he already mentioned, but had had a great time and 
uh, did a lot of great things in, in, in the space there. Um, ever since then, just been working with crypto, a lot of startups, uh, leading growth, leading operations, and, and rejoined Damon here uh, not too long ago to, to help lead uh, Orange and once again operations and everything else there. So looking forward to, to helping grow and, and lead the company, find some product market fit, and, and just be an evangelist for this, this space as well. Love it. And guys, I don't know where you are in the world. Maybe it's early in the morning, but I'm going to need you to wake up because this is the way we get through to these crowds in these spaces. We got like, they feed off of us up here. So I'm excited to speak to you guys, but I need everybody to be on the A game because I need people to hear this message. Legit. I'm being serious. I need people to hear this message. So I love that you guys are here. Let's wake our asses. Dimitri, where are you? Oh, Dimitri's <laughs> having trouble coming up. <laughs> no worries, no worries. We can. Uh, so we actually have some other technical team members that are actually in a meeting right now. Dimitri kind of stepped out, um, but we can proceed. And then you know, once he joins up on the stage, let's go. Love, love the energy, by the way, as well, yeah. Wolf. Wolf. So that's uh, it, baby. This is what I'm talking about. This is how it has <laughs> to go. <laughs> hey, Wolf, we got Bigish up here on the stage. What's up, Big? Hey guys, GM, GM, good. Good evening, good morning. Uh, yeah, how are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be here on stage. We're doing good, space. Big. Yeah. We, we. So, um, I'm Bigish. That's my Twitter handle. And uh, I've kind of been in the crypto space for like, you know, three years or so. So, um, I'm still quite, I consider myself a newbie, but it's kind of fun, you know, navigating the crypto space, seeing a lot of new things, meeting a lot of new people. And uh, Damon is actually one of the best person I've ever met. And uh, as, uh, I'm working actually as a community moderator for Orange Crypto, and uh, it's been fun. It's really been fun all the way. You know, kind of glad. I'm happy that this is my first project I'm working on. I'm actually starting. And the funny thing is, actually quite organic. It's very organic. Like most projects I've been seeing are just about, you know, getting airdrops, using a lot of uh, means to get people on the group. But this, this is the most organic project I've ever seen. And I'm actually happy to be. And the funny thing is, is I'm still early. I'm, and we're very, very early on the, on the crypto space. I mean, we are working with the Bitcoin narrative and stuff like that. I'm kind of happy to be here. I'm happy to be with the team, to be in these projects. And I know this project is really, really going to go, like, it's really going to go up the way to the moon, even to Mars. You know, we don't know. We might actually end up, you know, a high-end Elon Musk space station just to fly up all the way to Mars. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff, Big. Appreciate you, man. I'm Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, action. Let's go. All right, so the thing big some raise, man. Like he's trying to just keep bring the momentum and keep it. Is he robot? Or yeah, he's a robot, man. Right, I don't so. know if it's Twitter or what, man. It's crazy. Yeah, actually, I can't hear shit you saying. So we're gonna we're gonna kick <laughs> it off, drop down, and come back up. <laughs> but yeah, Damon, right. please, let's, let's, <laughs> ju let's jump into it. So yeah, let's talk a little bit about uh, Orange here. And how we got started where we're at so uh we as i mentioned we've been builders in this space and primarily on infrastructure side and you know about a year ago after we started seeing a lot of momentum particularly with obviously the institutional adoption that's occurring and even a lot of these etfs being submitted and applied over the past few years all of the activity that we're seeing now that people are really getting excited about especially DeFi and bitcoin we kind of forecasted was that uh, was going to eventually come because as everyone is aware here a few summers ago, DeFi summer and DeFi being built on Ethereum and some of the alt chains uh, really exploded. And we saw that as an opportunity that when Bitcoin tooling and the technology matures, especially with L2s, that all of that energy and those solutions that have been built on these alternate chains would eventually come to uh, Bitcoin. So, from there, we decided to start working on some infrastructure, particularly for Bitcoin itself. We started off in developing our own wallet. It supports, obviously, not only Bitcoin, but other standards and protocols, just BRC20s, 
ordinals, stacks, uh, and the list will continue, right? Because even over the past few months, we've seen a lot of new standards come about, including ARC20s, SRC20s, uh, the list goes on. And surprisingly, the market, um, you know, there's not a lot of household names when it comes to infrastructure and, and uh, things in this space. And so we want to be one of those early providers and players that helps support a lot of this uh, experimentation and a lot of these standards that are coming about. Because even as we see new standards and chains uh, and these L2s being propped up, you know, there's still not a lot of solutions to be able to host uh, a lot of these new tokens that are being developed. So we kicked off, started uh, developing our wallet, which is ready to be released next month. We also have a DEX and a data aggregator that's going to be released here in Q1 as well. Um, we've been fortunate enough to be able to have some great venture capital partners behind us. And we're actually releasing our BRC20 token here next week, um, working with a number of different launch pads, centralized exchanges, etc. So super excited to really kind of get out of stealth and building and introducing ourselves to the market. We've already started working with a number of startups and dApps to be able to integrate our wallet uh, into their solutions as well. And so uh, really excited about this journey because we're on the cusp of a new bull run in a very emerging market on the best blockchain in the world and uh, super bullish and optimistic. Love that. Love it. Okay, so now tell me about the wallet now. So first, am I using it? Are we? Is it mobile? Do I have the app for iPhone and Android as well as on desktop, laptop? Yeah, great question. So it's a, it's a browser extension for Chrome. Um, and, and the way that this will kind of feed into the way that we like to develop in our development process. So we like to build fast, break things fast, fix, and then iterate, right? Kind of their standard VC startup type of model. And uh, so we don't expand too quickly. And so um, right now we're just focused on the browser extension for Chrome. As we gain more traction and adoption, we get feedback from users and, you know, we get to the point to where we're ready to expand. Then from there, we'll expand off to Safari and Firefox. And then eventually down the line, um, you know, once things mature, there, we'll, we'll have some mobile solutions on iOS and Android. You know, one of the things that we found in the past, especially even in working with different companies, is when you try to broaden that scope too quick, then your operational and development cost uh, kind of, you know, 10x as well to be able to support all those platforms. So even if you have one bug fix, you know, if you're supporting five different platforms right off the bat, bat then, uh, you know, that's five different changes, updates, and so on. So we're just focused uh, as a browser extension on Chrome initially, and then we'll ex expand out over time. I'm always curious, um, do you, like, because, like, I guess from what I see from at least the Web3 users or, like, anybody that's using anything in the DeFi world, like, most people are on mobile. So uh, not that I, we, you don't need to go in, like in depth in, into it, but I'm just curious, like, do you guys do an analysis of when you choose or you decide like, Hey, we're going to go mobile versus uh, desktop like, or like Chrome extension. Oh yeah. 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 And, and that's actually what led us to start off uh, on the browser. So statistically, I don't have the exact numbers, but when we've went through it, even if you look at MetaMask's numbers, uh, the majority of their utilization and usage goes comes from the browser. Um, and I think a part of that is because of usability. Like when you think about importing a private key into your mobile device, that's a heavier lift for the average consumer. So um, yeah, the majority of usage actually comes through a browser and that's why we, f we focused on that first. Got it. Okay. And I just have a couple more questions and then obviously like I want to get to obviously like the panelist speakers here. We got some, some really, really, really great speakers and I want to be able to get to your team also. I just kind of like I like setting the stage initially. So from what I heard um, upon your intro, um, it's your essentially orange is not it's not just a wallet, right? Like you're a facilitator. So when I'm looking at your website, I see there's you have you have the Alex logo down there, right? So are you guys going to be competing or are you guys going to be like um, uh, with, with any of these companies or is this, hey, you sign on to Orange and we're going to now, you're now going to have immediate access to like all in one place, essentially all in one wallet to Alex, Arcadico, Gamma, uh, Ordinal's Market and so on. 
Yeah, yeah, great question. So we're highly collaborative and we want to be able to enable and expand the space. So Alex Labs is even one of our partners as a launch pad and, and they're helping bring us to market. Um, but for us, we obviously have our own solutions and products and services that we want to bring to market, but we're highly collaborative to the extent to where we want to be able to support all these other builders that are, are doing great things in this space as well. So um, we're integrating other reputable companies that have uh, great services that we think could help not only our users, but the industry in general. And so, uh, yeah, we what we envision with our wallet is not only just a culmination of services that we offer, but also, you know, from other reputable partners as well, um, if it adds value. Uh, so, so that's why you see some of those uh, names that we're, um, you know, helping support as well. We got to get the Bitflow Finance name on there. Once we get a bit hey, yeah, let, let's go, let's go. I think, <laughs> I think we might be connected with them already, but if not, yeah, we're always happy to to work together in some capacity. Hey, if you need a connection, I got you. Like I got, I've been bugging those guys long enough because uh, uh, we're all <laughs> we're all doing something, trying to gain some stacks points over there. So uh, I'm there happy to go. make an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so why the name? Out of curiosity, why the name Orange? Um, <laughs> Other so, than the obvious. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we our branding is around the concept of uh, being orange-pilled, right? So similar off of the playoff matrix, red pill, blue pill, orange pill. And, you know, everyone in this space kind of knows, especially if you're a maxi, that uh, if you're orange pill, you're, you're a, a maximalist when it comes to Bitcoin. So that's the reason why, being that we are a DeFi ecosystem for Bitcoin itself, we wanted that to represent the brand, kind of the ethos, our beliefs, the values as far as, you know, what we want to represent to the market. And we also believe on simplicity. And there's, you know, <laughs> there, there's not much more simplicity when it comes to just having that uh, branding as, as uh, orange itself. So uh, that's what we wanted to lead with. Love it. Right, last question, and then I'll open it up to everybody. Um, so, I guess why why should somebody use, I guess, the orange wallet as their as their as their Bitcoin wallet? And then the follow up there is: Can you tell us a little bit about the AI components of exactly how you guys use it, and what can we expect when we use it? Yeah. So, um, as far as the the wallet is concerned, obviously, there's the just general features of any wallet that you would expect right, in terms of custody. Uh, to be able to, to to store your assets, to be able to send and receive, etc. Uh, it is non-custodial, decentralized. We never touch funds. It's basically just a connector to the blockchain that allows you to be able to access your assets as it's stored directly on-chain. Um, we integrate normal open source standards, uh, including you know BIP39, which allows you to be able to use your existing seed phrases that you might have generated from, let's say, Unisat or Xverse. You can import that in our wallet and vice versa. If you create a wallet on ours, you can use that seed phrase in, in others as well. Um, so uh, as far as our wallet is concerned, you know, we have built some extra functionality that we think really sets us aside and gives us some unique USPs in, in comparison to the competition. One of those is the AI component component as well. And so when we think about crypto and, you know, all these companies, including ourselves, have been trying to solve this problem of making things much more usable, user-friendly, being able to onboard the next generation of average consumers, etc. So when we thought about that, uh, we wanted to be able to have users, there's two core tenets. One was be able to have users access information as quickly as they need it. And then the other was to be able to execute financial transactions as easy as possible. Uh, right now, the model across crypto and most apps is point and click, right? Um, and then to be able to find information in, in the crypto industry as well as your transactions in your wallet is not easy. So the way that our assistant solves that is it's not just a simple... API call to like open AI and, and things like that. We feed it our own language models to where, um, you know, you can actually get specific details around crypto, around finance. So imagine use cases such as asking, um, you know, give me the 24 hour trading volume on Binance. Uh, instead of having to, you know, go open up on some sites and all stuff like that, we want users to be able to have that information at their, their fingertips. 
um, or maybe even a use case such as, you know, let me know when I sent money to uh, Kevin.btc. And instead of having to scroll through your transactions and or going to a blockchain explorer, you should be able to have that information at your fingertips, right? So those are two uh, two examples of where it becomes very powerful and it saves users time and, and uh, efficiency and, and money. Where it becomes really powerful is uh, when you install our wallet and our assistant, um, any input field, or you can interact directly with the wallet, becomes kind of a, a, a text field uh, where you can uh, text commands as well as even use your voice. So instead of pointing and clicking in your wallet, we envision a future where one day people will just be speaking their transactions, right? So how powerful would it be to be able to say, you know, send a hundred dollar Bitcoin to Kevin.btc and you're taking uh, taken immediately to the confirmation screen. So, um, you know, these are some things that we believe kind of transformed the experience and uh, you know, really kind of catered to our vision of um, making things much more efficient and uh, easier, especially when it comes to crypto. Holy shit. I did not know that action. Go for it. I got questions on questions. Yeah, questions. hopefully. Can you hear me better now? <laughs> no, much better. I'm off LTE. That's what's going on here. Um, so you're essentially saying that your AMI model allows you to do on-chain analytics in a very easy and concise way. Is that what you're telling us, Kevin? Uh, this is this is Damon, but yeah. So effectively, yes. Yeah, and, and to do a lot of that processing, we actually leverage natural language processing and component of AI to be able to execute a lot of the things I just mentioned. Yeah, talk about having, <laughs> having an edge over people. This is awesome. I'm actually installing it right now to check this thing out. Um, does it work with your beta right now? So all of the wallet functions and some of... Some extra value-added features are included in the latest beta that's on our site. Uh, it doesn't include the, the assistant portion yet. We want to do kind of a more, um, once we release the wallet, we want to kind of do a, a huge marketing push around that, including the assistant component. So that build that you're going to be installing now doesn't have that assistant functionality in there yet. Got it, got it. Ooh, is there an expectation of when that will be available for people to test out? Yeah, we should have. So we already have a working proof of concept around it. Um, we'll probably start opening that up to the community here next month to start testing, giving us feedback and so on. And then we'll release it, at least an early version of it in Q1. I love it. I know everybody's got a bunch of things they're going to ask, so Brad, go ahead. Yeah, man, that sounds that sounds awesome. Um, I'm I'm really looking forward to people actually advancing some, bringing new uh, new features into this tech. You know, uh, the the questions I have, I guess, are I have two questions. One is for the LLM: Are you guys using and have you built out your own proprietary LLM, or are you just running a GPT API? And the second question is: Do you guys have an SDK available, or do you plan to launch or announce like an SDK? Yeah, so we thought about that. Uh, this the architecture around this. Uh, we never wanted a situation where when it comes to the assistant where it throws back an error like we can't help you. So it's a combination. We feed it our own uh, LM, uh, LLM model uh, that we're creating custom. Uh, we do have plans to be able to have some sort of program where we kind of add input or, or almost in a sense open source it to be able to have community members contribute to that, right? Because Obviously, data rules the world. And then we do connect the areas where it's maybe non-crypto related. So let's say you want to ask a question that's non-crypto related. We do then connect through an API uh, for, um, uh, it's, it's through Google Bard, uh, to be able to faci facilitate other questions that may not be related to our LLM. And then um, from there, we are working with some partners that have some interesting tech around this as well that we're we may consider integration as well. As far as us, um, we're not sure if it'll be part of our revenue model and something that we charge businesses for, but uh, yeah, we do plan on having uh, an SDK around this so others can implement it. 
Oh my God, let's go. Um, okay, so this is super exciting. Um, let's, I'll, 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 I'll also highlight something real quick because I didn't mention it. So we want to kind of be known as the Grammarly of crypto. You're on a web page, uh, it'll highlight keywords that are related to, let's say, crypto or finance or whatever the case may be. And if you hover over it, a widget pops up and you can actually get, let's say it's Bitcoin on the page. You can hover, hover over that highlight and then a widget pops up. It'll show you, you know, statistics about uh, Bitcoin as well as uh, you know, things such as circulating supply, price, um, you know, all that stuff. And then you can even see a graph chart and you can interact with that widget directly to even buy from that widget. It's just little hooks and, and things like this that really just transform. Yeah. Use our acquisition as well. Hey, Damon, you're cutting in and out a little bit. Um, so maybe, uh, I don't know if it's going to continue. Maybe just check your Wi-Fi or maybe if you want to just drop down really quick and then kind of come right back up. Kevin, maybe you can take over for like two seconds just in case. Sure, no problem. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, I did want to ask. Uh, so, Kevin, maybe this one's for you. That was incredible. So it's more like so it's going to be kind of like a. Um, it's almost like like a, like perplexity has it right where it's like you kind of get to hover over all these like different words and it, it and, and it it instantly shoots like an API call and all, all of a sudden you get to. I mean, that is that's really really cool. That is really really dope stuff. Um, Kevin, anything else around like the AI side that you guys maybe like have planned before I kind of move on to the to the token? Uh, maybe just a few more details. So just imagine an AI assistant that lives on top of your desktop, right? And, and that's kind of the, the vision that we're working towards and building towards, right? So almost like Microsoft Clippy, but be able to help you actually do things and be functional like in today's universe right with crypto and everything like that so um that's kind of the vision that i want to move towards too and as we get more inputs as we get more learnings things like that that will continue to iterate and get better and and things like that and i know we're very focused on the wallet as well but we're building much more than just the wallet as well so it's an entire suite of products it's an entire ecosystem to help support it and yes the wallet is the star and you know very much backed by ai but hopefully we can incorporate a lot of those other elements particularly the ai within some of our other products as well right so building a dex a data aggregator right and some other things to help support us on our journey such as you know a bridge and eventually a launch pad and, and things of this nature right so uh, very much involved in not just building a wallet that I, you know that is very straightforward in itself but it's truly an ecosystem to help the support of bitcoin development and building on bitcoin and everything appreciate it damon uh appreciate it kev thanks damon you hear, you hear me okay Okay, awesome. Um, last question around uh, around AI. So now, if if I wanted to uh, if I wanted to like to download or try out like the beta, um, obviously, like the, you, I know you mentioned just now, like, the AI is not going to be in there. That's going to be on the next iteration. But am I going to be able to use the AI when you first release it? I know you talked about that's crazy. You talked about like speaking like actually into it. Is it literally going to be like the way we use it now, where it's like I press a mic and it's ultimately going to prep the whole transaction or Am I going to be able to use it with, like, let's say, if I wanted to access, you know, the Alex decks or I wanted to go to Arcadico for a loan or something like, is that what we're talking? That's the level that we're talking? Yeah, it, it, it is the, that level. So initially, it'll be more simple and f focused towards uh, just our wallet itself. But the vision is. So the way, just at a high level, so people understand, the way that we do it, we leverage natural language processing to be able to understand your intent. And so, you know, when you say you want to send or swap or whatever the case may be, uh, we're able to recognize that intent. And then from there, uh, we match that intent with maybe whatever provider that is, is associated with that intent. So in that case, you know, like in the future, if you say, I, I want to be able to swap my assets on Alex, 
uh, we'd be able to support that as well because we recognize the intent and then we recognize a provider. Um, so that's how it would work kind of further down the line. Uh, V1 will be focused just on our core products. And so, um, you know, when you're trying to send or do whatever, it'll be specifically for focus on orange uh, products. Man, this is incredible. Lucas, sorry, man. I know I've been yapping this whole time. My fault. I just get so excited, man. Lucas, feel free to jump in if you have any questions, bro. <laughs> um, none so far. None so far. I barely have a connection right now. Yeah, so, it's crazy. Try it, man. I'm trying. <laughs> Yeah, man. I don't know why. Like, I mean, Miss Gecko just rugged also from Coho. This is crazy. I do have one question, if, I, if you don't mind me asking. Guys. Of course. Um, when you're talking about user acquisition here, and of course, retention, because obviously lifetime value will increase the ability to uh, raise more money or whatever the case may be in terms of like making more money per customer. Do you guys want to use your AI against the analytics that pour out from like maybe some of your ads you run or whatever you're doing? Because you could actually, in theory, you could like dump out the analytics into like a spreadsheet if you had to, or into a database, and then crawl that with AI, and then have it make the, like optimization decisions for you. Um, I love it. I love it. <laughs> just make so, it way more that, valuable. Someone that's actually someone that actually understands and is talking about uh, user acquisition and LTV because that's so rare in this space, right? Especially since it's so yeah, speculative. Well, it's because that's because we had a blending of like retail type investors to come into like a highly professional tech space, right? So my entire career was based on analytics and tracking and like everything, every, every part of my career has been successful because of that. And nobody in the retail space, sorry, you know, regular space, you know, if you work at 7-Eleven, you're not going to have to talk about LTV too much. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, no, I love it. And I appreciate you bringing that up because we like to geek out with builders and people that actually uh, are trying to expand and, and uh, grow this space. So, uh, Kevin's obviously the expert here. I'll just throw in my thoughts. So it's one of the reasons why we're creating the ecosystem and some other supplemental products around this um, to be able to not only acquire more users into the ecosystem and draw them into the wallet, but eventually gather more data. Uh, and because from our perspective, we're very data driven. It's one of the reasons why we decided to go down the path of a data aggregator and having kind of a coin market cap version specifically of Bitcoin. Um, it's not a revenue model for us, but it's kind of our dark horse because we leverage every component of that data in order to be able to feed the assistant and use that for our own benefit. And so, uh, yeah, when it comes to all the things that you mentioned um, we're able to do and extract and uh, extrapolate a lot of that data for our own personal use in order to to really uh, you know benefit our own products. Is uh, is that your strategy though? Is it, are you guys gonna like run like display ads or like you know video ads or influencer ads, whatever the case may be, ads? Um, and then are you gonna like tie that back into? I'm assuming an effective CPA because let's be honest, like everything backs into an eCPA, regardless of CPM and CPC. So. Um, how are you backing that into like your analytics of like driving, you know what I mean? Like driving good user acquisition numbers because at the end of the day, you're, you're going after people in this case that are early adopters, right? And then the rest of them are going to be like waves out from early adopters. You know what I mean? Like just, if you look at a, you look at a targeting, you know, like a document where you have like concentric circles that go out, you know what I mean? Like the first one is like a influencer slash early early alpha influencer that like gets involved in a product early and then there's early adopters who are all like hey i'm you know i'm the first one who bought crypto in 2010 or 2011 and then there's like waves of that out there because they see people getting rich so a whole bunch of like less qualified people come into the space how do you plan on and i'm not uh, by the way this isn't like a gotcha moment i'm just i'm really asking um how do you guys plan on doing like user acquisition in that case where you're trying to reel in people that don't that aren't like you know, the fa the faithful, um, you know, they're not like you know, bowing down to like crypto gods and stuff like that every two seconds um, and being like purists. How are you going to bring in the people that are like more retail? Yeah, so that is a part of our strategy, especially when it comes to what we're calling orange market cap. Well, obviously, uh, we one of our dual revenue model streams when it comes to that particular product is being able to have an API that we can 
sell to either businesses or consumers or, or institutions to be able to access that data. Two is a display ad component where um, you know we incur revenue, but then also take that data, as you're mentioning, and be able to insert that into um, uh, the, the business for our own personal use, right, as it pertains to being able to kind of navigate and, and uh, make business decisions around that data. Kevin could probably speak better as far as, you know, how we are going to leverage that uh, in, into our, our business model. Um, it's also, oh, by the way, you, you don't have to tell me everything because I know, like, this space is very, like, hey, show me what you're doing or else. I'm not that way. If you guys have a strategy, <laughs> that's not my, it's not my place to be like, give me your exact strategy. You know what I mean? Like, so I just want to make sure you're not thinking that I, you owe me an exact strategy here. <laughs> Yeah, no worries. It, it's it's great to even be able to have this dialogue, right? Because I think, especially in this space, it's uh, it's highly speculative to the extent where people don't even think about user acquisition, right? They think about being able to make sure that there's liquidity for a token and that and people could trade it, and 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 that's considered traction. Right? Whereas, as as you're fully aware, especially building a business, it's much more sophisticated than that. Yeah, it really is. I think it's interesting that people do start uh, projects or start or start companies in general, and they don't have like their metrics of success down. You know what I mean? Like they don't have, hey, we can spend as much as this, or hey, we we ran some tests, and the tests say here's the effective you know cost per acquisition we can pay for right now, and then if we can do whatever we need to do with these folks in the user experience, then we can actually afford to pay more. So yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, you know the problem. In it's too easy to jump in this industry, not have a product funds, and maybe they'll execute the roadmap. Maybe not. It's not a so the the entry in this industry is so low, and people are willing to throw their money at such low quality uh, projects without vetting them um, that you know when we actually start thinking about building a business. Uh, a, a lot of folks never even have that intention. And so I, I think that's one of the, the problems that this industry suffers from. Uh, but it's always, always refreshing to actually see companies that are building and thinking kind of in the same context that you're bringing up. And just following up on the community side, I see that you guys do have rewards. Can you tell us a little bit about the rewards program? So I, I don't think we've um, officially launched any rewards not programs. Yet. Yeah, not not yet. But we do have thoughts about uh, how we're going to implement that in the future. And you know, being data driven, it will be around things such as engagement and um, how you're able to to help the community. Uh, community is obviously a huge initiative for us, but very important for you know and the, kind of the lifeblood of of any company in this space. Uh, and when we think about community, it's not just about token holders, as most companies do. Um, we want to be able to support multiple categories as as it pertains to community, including um, you know VCs and uh, and uh, liquidity providers such as exchanges and launch pads, market makers, and then you know even KOLs and. When we think about community, what we want to be is kind of the, the best connector or the best host of the party, of this great party called Bitcoin. And so if we can even connect community members or new projects with folks inside of our network, if they're launching a, a product and want to get connected with a launch pad or even centralized exchanges, um, you know, the, the, for, for us, community success is, is helping enable others be successful. And so it's not just about having a bunch of token holders that kind of spe speculate on price. Um, so we're going to be building out programs like that and then obviously rewarding engagement other people that help us grow it. Oh, that is so exciting. I'm just thinking about, and Dave, I know you're thinking the same thing. Think of the cross-collaboration. Think of the communities that are going to be using this. Like, it's it's going to make it's going to make some waves. That's my thought. You know what I find interesting about all, about this this entire thing no, like just the, the difference in the world between web 2 and web 3 right like if we look at like the equity markets it's like people that buy stock you're buying ownership in a company right those companies could give two shits literally about like the common stockholders but yet here where we issue a token that doesn't give you ownership in anything 
Everybody is concerned about to when token price go up. Damon, please don't be one of those. Focus on building a dope ass project and like a dope ass product, like to be able to like that we can use like day in and day out that is useful, that we can come back to, that is simple to understand. And I promise you the rest will take care of itself. <laughs> I swear. Echo, thank you for coming up. How are you? <laughs> I had a question. Um, I believe it was when Raf was speaking about like the internal securities, and I like I, I love community as well, and just just hearing you speak, Wolf. So I, I kind of got lost in the sauce on my question. So excuse me there. I don't know if Raf is still in the audience, but as far as your token and it being launched on crypto, so for me, you know, everyone has a different journey. You know, set so rolls Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto. You know, there's a bunch of different meme coins, a bunch of different things out there. But I'd like to hear more about the security behind what you're launching, and just you know, like you said. You know, I've been here since 2011. This is one account. You know, I, I just, I'm just here to support, learn, and listen. So, Wolf, um, if Raf is still in the audience, I don't know where he went off to, but um, I'd love to hear more about the security side of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, did you guys have somebody else up here? I'm not sure. Damon, can you handle that one? Or, or Kevin? I'm not sure. Yeah, so, um, you know, the, the great thing about... Uh, this space, especially when it comes to BRC twenties, is it's effectively just a, a derivative of Bitcoin, right? Which, in our opinion, is the most secure blockchain in the world. And the only difference is with BRC twenties, there's it's an inscription on top of uh, the asset. And so, when we look at it from an infrastructure perspective, like there's no contracts, there's nothing else or sophisticated such as Ethereum. Uh, which we love Ethereum as well, but when someone launches a token on that particular chain or a different alt chain, there's more complexity in there, right? Because all smart contract code is custom. It could be hacked uh, if the code's not written appropriately, et cetera. Uh, and so in our case, one of the reasons why we're so bullish as well, any token on, on uh, Bitcoin itself, the from uh, from a security perspective it's much more secure than a lot of the other options that are out on the market with some of these other alt chains um and so even for us like there there's no need for us to get an audit on our token as well as other players because what do you do do you just audit bitcoin um so yeah from a security perspective you know uh, we're, it's it's uh for us it's it's as gold as you can get and just a follow up question on that, Orange or Bean. I'm sorry, I'd followed you. Um, as far as your community and the, the partners that you've let in on that you've let in on this project, how how large, how many partners do you have involved? I don't know about you all, but I've been involved in different communities situations where I bet my life on it, literally. And I just wanted to know, like, how many partners do you have involved in this particular launch? Yeah. So great question. Um, and the way that we look at partners is by categories and the way that they assist us. So we have obviously venture capital partners that have been involved uh, kind of in our seed round. Uh, I think last count we have, it's around like 20 something involved. Um, liquidity partners, when we think about centralized exchanges, market makers, launch pads, etc. Uh, we have uh, currently, I think, six partners there and then from a technology perspective we've integrated some partners within our, our tech our wallet uh, and then we're already working with I would say maybe about five partners already that are looking to integrate our wallet into their DAP um, so for us we we know especially my background at Microsoft was uh, was driving partnerships so we we know how vital it is um, in order to be able to scale and the fastest way to do that is through collaborations and so that's a core initiative for us and, and we've been very heavy on that front and um, from a technology perspective you'll start seeing a lot of announcements around some of the, the players that we've either already integrated or are going to be integrating with soon and not, not to get too vital into it but the the people that you've, you've partnered with have you i'm, I'm sure y'all done the legwork right and you fully dox them you fully trust them and understand like where they're coming from their background and everything yeah so we do have a, a vetting process that we go through as well and um all of the partners that we've worked with today have actually come through with by referral as well so kind of an extra set of eyes extra layer of folks um, but yeah as we do our own personal outreach and things like that we certainly want to make sure that 
the folks we want we work with are reputable and uh, also protect our own community and so yeah we do go through a vetting process on that yeah, and that's a, I think that's what a large amount of people don't understand when it comes to cybersecurity and things like that. You know, you know, you, you meet people in communities, and like, as long as you stand by each other, and you know, years go by, people don't understand that many accounts have different different faces on them. But when you work with people who do different launches, you launch different applications, and you know, a lot of us are backed by different corporations, and we have to we have to do things under pseudo names so they don't own it. And that's, to me, it's what I hear is that's what community is all about. I came in here because Lucas was in here. You probably don't know me from the man in the moon. It's my real face. But I, I'm not here showing anything. And, you know, I follow people for years. And sometimes they don't they don't know which account's watching them. But, you know, we, we've, all, we've all invested into things. And I, what I think the huge takeaway is is that, you know, if you're in this room and you've known them for more than a year or two years or three years or four or ten years, you know, it's you can you real recognize real. And I recognize you all, and I'm just here watching. And you are completely correct. There are a lot of corporations watching. It goes beyond corporations. It goes to governments. And this is, you know, a bull run is a wartime thing, right? So it's, I just like to support real, and this is my real voice. I built a bot back on Twitch a lot before bots existed, before, you know, we've all done things. We've all launched applications. We lost money. And, like, you know, from what I hear, the people that I know in this room, the people that don't know me, that don't know I even know them. I support a few in this room, and I can recognize it, and thank you. Thank you, Beam. Thank you, Orange. Thank, thank you, everyone. And just everyone just realize your wallets are tracked, cookies are tracked, things are tracked, and these people are smart, so just know when to listen. And I just wanted to say thank you. I'm, I'm going to watch out for you guys. Yeah, thank you so much. Hashtag real recognizes real. I love that. Oh, that was excellent. Like, Echo, we need to say that louder for the people in the back. Everything is tracked. Don't click links. Nothing is free. Because <laughs> hashtags are blood prints, folks. Like, let's go. Let's, I'm an elder one. I'm 35 years old. You know what I mean? America's online. <laughs> you know? And, like, but, you know, the friends that you meet in these spaces, you, you never know. You never know their corporation, their, the government behind them. And, then like, when it comes to, you know, just showing up in spaces, people might be listening for 15 years, and you do not know. But, you know, we we'll recognize real. And I've had wallets wash up. I've had wallets get seized. Nobody wants that. No, we're all legal legals, right? And this is recorded space. There's a red eye in the sky, folks. So, you'll recognize real. Hashtag it. Let's go. Echo, we're going to be best friends, me and you. I'm just letting you know from right now. Uh, I in, in was the, like, yep, Dave, <laughs> you have a new best friend. <laughs> yeah, in the event you haven't been following me for the last three years uh, and know everything about me, um, I'm looking forward to getting to know you, uh, what your journey was like and everything else. But, like, yes, please hang around come back around every single time. Thank you for that. That was awesome. Um, Damon, let's talk token. We got, 10, we got about 10 minutes left. Um, tell me everything I need to know about the token launch next week. Yeah, so uh, our token is quite simply called Orange. Um, token symbol, actually. On BRC20s, it's limited to just four characters. And so look for ORNG. We're launching with... Uh, a couple of, or uh, uh, three launch pads in particular, Alex Labs, which is an OG builder in the space, BRC20.com, which are also the founders of uh, the .com, BRC20 token, and then Leverify. And so um, they're going to be launching us here on the 30th, and then immediately following on the 31st, we have a couple of centralized exchanges that will be uh, helping support the liquidity uh, including MEXC and BitGet. Um, we're working, we want to make sure that liquidity and availability of the token is uh, very high so that it's accessible, you know, for any audience uh, in the world, no matter where you're located, et cetera, or whatever your exchange preferences are. So we're already in talks with about four other exchanges to be able to get it listed uh, very in the very near future as well. Um, starting market cap for Orange itself, or the the, the FDV is uh, starting at six million, uh, and then the starting market cap is approximately one point five. Um, we think, in comparison to a lot of the the peers in the market, especially players in the BRC twenty space, we think that you know there's quite a bit of room for upside, especially since we work at the the infrastructure level of uh, of this space in this industry. Um, but if you compare us to a lot of the BRC20 tokens out there, which have no product, utility, or even a business revenue model, 
um, we're super optimistic and bullish because we think we have a lot of potential. I mean, Kevin said, you guys got Clippy, man. What else do you need? Let's go. Uh, what's his name? Bitcoin is rich. Luzzy, I, I sent you an invite. I love the guys that throw thumbs down. Uh, I'd love to inv I invited you up, so come on up. Uh, if you're going to throw a thumbs down in my in my room, you better come on, you better come on up and speak on it, boy. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Um, no, but I, I appreciate that, Damon. I appreciate that. Um, so different, um, so the three different launch, so th th three different launch pads is Alex, Leverify, sorry, what was the third one? BRC20.com. BRC20.com. Okay. Um, can we do anything beforehand to try and get in on this action? Are there any quests or anything that we can do on Zealy or on Gox, on Galaxy, like anywhere? No, not at this time. So, um, yeah, the only way to get in right now are the launch pads and then the uh, the centralized exchanges, which will be listed on the 31st. Copy. Schlizzy, welcome. Let's be respectful. Uh, I saw you were throwing the thumbs down. Just out of curiosity, I always like kind of getting the other side of this argument. So it's always not, yeah, 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 yeah. So let's hear it. What's going on? Why the thumbs down? Oh, I, I just don't see any value in anything that's being done. I mean, you know, I, I get what BRC20s are, but, like, what's the argument that you wouldn't issue, uh, like, coins and tokens on Taproot? Isn't it quite a bit more efficient? Well, that's a whole yeah. other conversation. But go ahead, Damon. Go ahead. If you want yeah, to I mean, what's, what's your yeah. bottle there? No, that, that, that's a great point, right? So we're obviously very familiar with um, what Benny and team are doing over at TAP. We think they're doing doing some great things. Obviously, there's other great builders in this space as well, even including Stacks and their L2 and, and what they're doing with the not upcoming Nakamoto release. We wanted to uh, stay just native on Bitcoin and, and the Bitcoin chain. And so this was our path to be able to not only just support the chain, but stay on it natively instead of having a separate potential L2 or, um, you know, we, we don't have our own L2 chain itself already. So this was our path to be able to to support uh, our own token. Shlizzy, let me ask you a question. Like when you say Taproot, like can you maybe educate the audience a little bit as to like why Taproot as opposed to like being native on like, the, like as opposed to going with the native BRC20? Like what would be the difference? Well, from what I understand, and I'm no, I'm no expert here. I, I've just I've just heard like how different chains, different different software is working. Um, so with BRC twenty, you every time you're moving that token, you're uh, you're having to pay a Bitcoin transaction fee, right? You're paying an yep. on-chain fee. Yep. But with Taproot, you can move that ch that token basically for free, nearly. Like there's there's no friction there. Well, so I if mean, you wanted to like like if I wanted to tokenize like uh, Microsoft stock, right? Uh -huh. Like I, I could essentially tokenize like the entire company of Microsoft and and create uh, a, an exchange and basically like give ownership of those tokens to people and let them trade on that exchange, but they would have to be paying, they wouldn't have to pay any transaction fees to and from the exchange, from their wallet to the exchange. And, you know, if it was a fairly centralized exchange, there wouldn't be very much friction there either. Okay, so, so I think this is where... So, so I, I, I think, I I think the biggest you. problem with BRC20 is, is that you're going to run into in the future is, like... If fees happen to go through the roof, you're saying your asset's going to be worth more possibly, or if it's not, then you're not going to be able to afford to move that BRC20. So you're going to be stuck with it. Yeah. So so people need to know that if you don't know that already. So well, that's, that's where community plays in. I don't mean to interrupt, but like, yeah, go for it. that's where community plays in. It. And I'm an unbiased opinion. Everything you're saying, this isn't an education on you know all the risks that can be taken. Anybody in the space know the risks that are taken and where the community plays in at is we're going to support each other, not just on this launch, but on other launches. And you can't buy that. There's some things money can't buy. And that's all I can say about that. Yeah. And it's not to say that they won't essentially grow to where, like Damon just said, like, let's grow out to, let's explore the Stacks ecosystem, right? With the Nakamoto upgrade, when you got five second block times or less, 
sure, I'm sure they're going to be able to revisit something like that, but it's just not there yet, right? I feel like we're so early sometimes that I think we like to kind of get a little bit ahead of ourselves, but yeah, go for it, Action. Um, yeah, as a biased uh, opinion here, I love that the way you guys are going about it just because I'm mining away, so any traffic you bring onto the network is highly welcome. <laughs> I, I, can, I can agree with that 100%. Let's go. All right, you see? We worked out our differences here. This is good. We got two minutes left. Uh, Damon, any closing thoughts? Like, please feel free. I obviously like to like to take us out. And um, if I know Dimitri came up a little bit earlier, but if Dimitri is willing to like set up a separate time so that we can download this extension, I know some people might not be familiar. Like, you know, <clears throat> I was having a little bit of an issue just finding like the zip file or whatever. So if he's down, that would be awesome. But yeah. Yeah, happy to support any future spaces as well. Obviously, would love we're we're going to have our own. Would love to have your audience and community join us for some future segments. Uh, I did want to comment real quick. Um, you know, great feedback. And the reality is, is even on tap and some of these other L2s, you're going to have to pay fees, right? So no matter what chain you're on, you're going to have to pay fees, and you'll have to have that native token in order to be able to support gas. So just because you go to another L2 or, or whatever doesn't mean the fees go away necessarily. And for us, uh, again, our initiative was to stay native, stay true to Bitcoin and, you know, kind of follow along the gold standard. The good thing is there are solutions in order to produce that liability in terms of gas if you need to. So even with our bridge, you can you can bridge that over to ERC-20 if you'd like and, you know, get, uh, or, or maybe even uh, Matic, and then you can get some severely reduced fees as well, but still kind of interact with kind of a wrapped version of the token uh, to minimize those type of things. But uh, yeah, just to be clear, even, even if we decided to immerse ourselves in the TAP protocol and that ecosystem, um, which we didn't because we don't want to stay na native, there would still be fees that would be incurred as well. Got it. And uh, give us the date. Well, wh when's the, the launch date for the uh, for the token? Uh, on the 31st. So literally a week out from now. Um, and uh, yeah, it'll be available on, on uh, the centralized exchanges. If you want to learn more, just follow us on Twitter as well as join our telegram, uh, uh, telegram groups. And we're going to be keeping everyone updated there. Certainly not only just obviously the launch of the token, but the progress of all of these other products and services that we'll be releasing. And uh, for more information, just go to orangecrypto.com. Could you put that in the nest, your telegram group, if you don't mind? Sorry, I was a little late to the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. You got it. I'll give you a, I'll give you a second to throw it up in there. Um, but yeah, no, this was a dope conversation. Um, for those that obviously are, are going to want to try out this beta, um, you know, stay uh, like turn the notifications on for for this account for the Wolf account because I'm going to be in touch with this team and we're going to see if we can maybe set up another space just to kind of simply like walk us through it, how to set it up, what are the features, get maybe a little bit more technical. Um, but yeah, this was amazing. Anybody, if anybody else has closing thoughts, uh, Echo it was really really great to meet you, Lucas. Really amazing insight today, Bread Gex like action. I really appreciate it, Shlizzy. Thank you for coming up, being the other side. Like that was amazing. Biggie-ish, yo, uh, you know why? We got to give it to B, uh, and thank you, Kevin, but Biggie-ish, you know what? I'm going to let you take us out because you you hyped us up in the beginning, so <laughs> take us out, my man. One, one thing, though, don't don't call me Schultz. I mean, you can if you want to. I'm not saying you don't, but uh, revolution, there you go. <laughs> you got revolution, it. let's go. Let's go. <laughs> okay, guys. Uh, yo, and, and Wolf, shout out to you. Um, thank you so much for hosting us, having us on your space, having us connected with your community. And, you know, thank you for, for what you're doing and your team for helping us expand the space as well. You know, we're seriously uh, extremely bullish about what's to come, not just for us, but the industry overall. If for whatever reason, you know, the folks here don't want to ride with us, completely understand, but at least our recommendation is to learn as much as you can about Bitcoin and this ecosystem, because what's about to happen over the next couple of years, uh, especially how it transforms the way that we transfer value and it impacting our traditional financial systems is, is going to be pretty epic. And we're still early. And all of you that are on this call today, uh, you know, should, should be very proud to be a part of this new revolution.
Let's go. Yeah, my, my, it was my pleasure, man. And uh, I promise you, I'm riding with you. And I know if I'm riding with you, there's probably going to be a few others that are riding with you. So, like I said, just Let's continue, to build, a dope, just continue <laughs> to build a dope ass product, bro. That's all we care about. Biggie, go. Yeah. Okay, guys, I'm not much for words, but I'm just going to say just a few words. I say, keep being bullish. Don't be a jit. Uh, so you don't end up being on the formal platform. You know what I mean? So just keep being, being bullish. And uh, I always have this saying that whatever goes down, surely goes up. And um, whatever goes up, surely comes down. So I feel, yeah, I love you guys. Love you guys. So shout out to all you. Shout out to Wolf Up, Wolf Web. Shout out to Damon, Tiona. Shout out to you. Shout out to everyone. Don't stop being bullish. Don't stop Let's being go. bullish. Lights out. Appreciate you guys. Everybody, I'll talk to y'all later. Everybody, have a great day. Peace.